Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas. We'll be bringing the latest in everything cool every single day. Thank you all for joining us in EP Live. This is fantastic that you are here. Today's rundown is going out to a brand new member of EPN's new family, uh, Jordan Cunningham. Thank you so much, sir. We got you this rundown. Two of the most controversial things in the Star Wars universe, Battlefront 2 and Attack of the Clones, are coming together. EA and DICE have unveiled Battlefront 2 Battle of Geonosis, a free update for the game based around the critically panned second prequel movie. It gives players a new map that recreates the film's climactic battle sequence on the planet of Geonosis, and it comes with a new playable hero character, the younger Obi-Wan Kenobi, based on the likeness of actor Ewan McGregor. EA and DICE have been rolling out free updates like this ever since Battlefront 2 arrived, but the game still hasn't shaken off the bad reputation it earned from its controversial loot box mechanics. The Battle of Geonosis lands next week, and out of all the things in Episode 2, that Battle uh, of Geonosis was really damn cool. I don't know if you guys remember this, but in that battle, we got some shots that we hadn't really seen in Star Wars before. Lots of zoom-ins and close-up shots, and like it felt like there was a, a cameraman on the battlefield taking tight shots and then pulling back. And of, of all the things that they could pull from Episode 2, the battle Battle of Geonosis is definitely one of the cool ones. I still remember, uh, you know, the carnage and uh, the chaos that was on display and Yoda, you know, leading the clone troopers and saying, Go over there, that way is where the battle is, and we must fight them. It was crazy. It was a really fun sequence. Sorry for my terrible Yoda right there. Uh, but I am excited to see a, a Ewan McGregor, Obi-Wan Kenobi. And I got to be honest, we're going to be playing a little bit of Battlefield Five uh, again uh, later in the show and let's play in chat. And I've been enjoying it, but it's so beautiful and it's so dice-like. It makes me want to jump back into Battlefront 2, which is a gorgeous, say what you will about that game, it's a gorgeous Star Wars love affair, uh, love fest, and I want to jump in and see some of this, especially now that they've got Obi-Wan in there. Maybe I will. Maybe I will. Uh, mark your calendars, because we know when the next Venom movie is going to ooze into theaters. Well, sort of. Sony Pictures has set release dates for two new movies based on the Spider-Man franchise. They'll land July 10th, 2020, and October 2nd, 2020. And although the studio hasn't revealed exactly what the two new movies are, it's pretty obvious that one of them will be the sequel to Venom. The film has become a surprise hit at the international box office, earning $800 million bucks so far, and Sony has already stated that they plan to make more. As for what the other Spider-Man-related movie will be, we do know that Sony is working on a standalone film about the Marvel anti-hero Morbius the Living Vampire, so that would be a safe bet. In the meantime, the new animated movie Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse lands next month, and I can't wait for that. I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. Uh, it's been a great year to be a Spider-Man fan. Uh, of course, we've got Far From Home coming out next year. I can't wait for that movie. Uh, but, I, you know, I've watched uh, Homecoming a few times on 4K Blu-ray, and it is beautiful. What a killer movie that is. The game has been just rocking, and uh, I think you might have noticed I have a new Spider-Man toy on the, uh, the set. I picked this up yesterday at the Disney Store. This is part of their Toy Box line, which I feel was directly influenced uh, by the incredible work that when it did Disney Infinity, rest in peace. Uh, but they had this uh, on display, and it uh, harkens back, this spider buggy thing, to uh, uh, an old Corgi toy that just made no sense. It came out, I think, in the 70s, and it was like, why would Spider-Man have a car? Why would he have a car? Why, and why is, it dressed like, why is it a beach buggy? He lives in New York City. Why would he have a car, and why is it a beach buggy? And it's silly. Uh, but I love it. And uh, so now that lives here on the EP set. And uh, Spider-Man rocks. I can't wait for Spider-Verse. And uh, you know what? Venom was silly and stupid, but fun also. So uh, I just hope that they squeeze some Spider-Man into their Venom movie and maybe their, their uh, Morbius movie as well. Uh, you know, maybe they're learning over at Sony from their partnership with Disney and the uh, MCU, and maybe all of this new stuff is going to be a lot more fun. But certainly, they made so much money, they've got some weight to throw around out there right now. All right, usually the end of a war is a good thing, but this one is actually a little disappointing. The online strategy game Total War Arena is shutting down. The game launched with an open beta earlier this year and was created through a partnership between Total War developer The Creative Assembly and World of Tanks publisher Wargaming, with the idea being to combine the gameplay from both franchises. Unfortunately, it didn't pay off. Creative Assembly says that the beta just hasn't taken off like they hoped, and they're ending development and will take the final servers offline in February. The good news is that Creative Assembly says that the Arena development team will continue working at the studio and use what they've learned on the project to help bring to life future games in the Total War franchise, and that's what's going on right here. If you're reading between the lines, it's Creative Assembly, and Sega said, you know, Total, the Wargaming people are great, 
but we could probably do this. We could probably figure out how to do some kind of free to play, you know, massive uh, online experience within the Total War franchise and just sort of own all of the development and the production and the marketing and all of that stuff ourselves since they play in that sandbox all the time. And I expect that probably within the next couple of years, we are going to see some major online uh, announcements about um, to the Total War franchise. And this idea is not done. I mean, certainly they're looking at the success of other online strategy titles like Le League of Legends and, uh, you know, uh, Dota 2 and stuff. And they're saying, well, why don't we kind of mix a little of our peanut butter with that kind of chocolate and we'll see what we can get. And I think we'll likely see some kind of announcement from uh, Sega and Creative Assembly about this down the road. Um, and they're trying to be as polite as they can to say bye bye to Wargaming. Uh, but then, you know what? Wargaming probably learned some things as well, and they make tons of money off that World of Tanks franchise, that World of franchise, and I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, more strategic options in, uh, in their franchises as well. You know, people learn, and then they go and they build new things. That's the way it goes. Blizzard hasn't announced Diablo 4, but that hasn't stopped loads of details about the game from surfacing. Kotaku has posted a lengthy story about the future of the Diablo franchise, complete with several new pieces of information about the unannounced fourth game in the main series. Citing unnamed sources at Blizzard, Kotaku reports that Diablo 4 is currently in development under the codename Fenris and will have a much darker tone than Diablo 3. The game apparently started life as a new Diablo 3 expansion before evolving into a full-fledged sequel, and Blizzard is hoping to have it out around 2020. Keep in mind that no official announcements about Diablo 4 have been made, but Blizzard might be regretting that. Earlier this month, they announced the new mobile experience Diablo Immortal, which angered many fans eager for a new PC game. So the sooner they unveiled Diablo 4, the sooner those people might be satisfied. Uh, yeah, I, I still feel like a, a lot of the anger and hatred shown towards Blizzard because they put out a, a mobile teaser uh, was a little unwarranted and a little crazy, but I also feel like there were lots of people in that audience that uh, were expecting to have their tastes placated. And it wasn't necessarily a, uh, a huge general audience uh, mobile game playing crowd. I, lots of lessons learned there. And I think a lot of uh, developers and publishers from that announcement and also from the Command and Conquerors announcement that uh, EA did at E3 uh, for their mobile game, lots of big lessons learned. Uh, clearly people are playing mobile games. Even hardcore gamers are playing mobile games. But we still, as a uh, the lifers, as the people that have supported this business through thick and thin and uh, reach back all the way to the roots of uh, franchises like Diablo, we want our games for our machines to keep coming as well. You know, we want the, 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 the supremo, you know, top of the line experiences still funded and still sent our way and we like them teased even if they you know we can't get a release date and uh, uh yeah i think blizzard is probably regretting that they didn't have some diablo 4 type logo pop up on the screen at blizzcon uh still lots of you know, lots of hate man like all of that energy could be ch channeled and used for good you know like sometimes I just feel like people just get up in arm even all the Star Wars all that hate out there it's uh, you know think of ways that you could channel that into some kind of creative endeavor if you're one of those people you know yesterday I I jokingly t tweeted about there potentially being a Death Star in the uh, uh, the next Star Wars movie if they use that trope again and, and I got some some uh, pretty nasty comments back about that idea and I just think man like I, I get where that anger is coming from and we are all passionate about all of this stuff but uh, sometimes you can use that that anger for good things you know anyways big lessons learned I suspect we are going to hear about Diablo 4 very soon maybe at the uh, the video game awards it's all on you Jeff Keeley. give us those exclusives buddy all right, that's going to do it for our rundown today. Do me a favor, when we clip this out as a separate segment, please share it with the hashtag PlayForever. And right now, we're moving on to this day and everything cool.
Welcome to This Day and Everything Cool for November 22nd. On this day in 2005, Microsoft's bid to become the king of the console market went full circle. The Xbox 360 was released in North America with a global launch following a few weeks later. The original Xbox had been released just five years earlier and was a modest success, selling 26 million units worldwide, but with the Xbox 360, Microsoft had much, much bigger success. They had begun developing the console shortly after the release of its predecessor and under the leadership of their new VP of Interactive Entertainment. Peter Moore, they recruited outside help from hardware makers like ATI and IBM to design the new parts that would run the system. The idea was to create a console that would be easy for third-party developers to create games for, while at the same time being powerful enough to compete with what rival Sony was planning with their upcoming console, the PS3. Microsoft also wanted to get their new system out first, which they hoped would give them a head start. The Xbox 360 was released almost an entire year before the PlayStation 3, and thanks to big first-party exclusives like Gears of War and Halo 3, it helped win over players. The 360 was also helped by its online multiplayer service, Xbox Live, which at the start was much more user-friendly than the PlayStation Network. The Xbox 360 easily beat the PS3 in overall sales, although both systems failed to match the surprise success of Nintendo's motion-sensing Wii. The 360 remained in production for more than a decade and wasn't discontinued until early 2016. Exactly eight years later, on November 22, 2013, Microsoft released their follow-up, the Xbox One. Oh man, so many good times with the Xbox 360. What an incredible console that turned out to be, even with the red ring of death. And it's amazing that we have all that B-roll footage from back in the day with all of the assembly line Xbox 360s and they're all red ringing. Um, I don't think uh, Microsoft knew what they were doing when they sent out that B-roll footage back in the day, but we used it a lot because there were a lot of stories about Xboxes uh, having issues. But God, there were some incredible games on the Xbox 360. I remember visiting studios and they just had so many great development uh, pieces of development uh, in the works, all these great pieces of software coming to, war to us. Uh, and that people had jumped onto the 360 because it came out first. Anyways, great to see everybody here. Jordan Cunningham, Taz, Thorazine666. Uh, we've got Tyler Fisher in the house, and Danny Sullivan is here. Uh, Daniel Fiego, who says, Vic! It's great to see you, Adrian Leon, um, uh, Paul Adamson, uh, Blake Siefkin. Oh, I gotta block him. Hold on one second here. Just gotta. No, <laughs> it's great to have everybody here. Mucky Mucks, we live or we live. Um, it's uh, a great day to celebrate some video games and fun things. Uh, and speaking of which, I've got a review right now of a Nintendo Switch game that I've been playing uh, kind of obsessively over the last little while. It's called Road Redemption, and I am a massive fan of you know, Electronic Arts original Road Rash games uh, for the Sega Genesis. Those games blew my mind when they first came out. And I've been wanting EA to make us a new Road Rash game for a long time, and they refuse. EA, you're not picking up the phone when I call. Please make us a new Road Rash game. In the meantime, we've got games like Road Redemption, um, which is uh, out on a bunch of different platforms. I wanted to play it on the Switch because I felt like the Switch would be a great home for an arcade racing game like this where you're beating the crap out of people with bats and sticks and uh, shotguns. The shotgun's my favorite weapon in the game, by the way, because you reload just like um, Arnold Schwarzenegger did in Terminator 2, and you're blasting away at bad guys. It's so cool. Uh, this game is loaded with issues and problems. It's got frame rate issues. It's got some control problems. Um, it's a little bit rough with textures. There's a lot of repetition. But you know what? Screw all that. You love what you love, right? That's the thing that I've learned in my uh, 75 years of reviewing things is that you love what you love and sometimes you just can't help it. This is a buried treasure in the making um, and it's got lots of you know quirks and problems and frustrations, but it's fun. At the core of it all is this fun engine that works, you know? I mean, You've got a lot of systems at play here. You've got to keep your bike on the road, and you've got to, uh, sometimes you've got racing missions, sometimes you've got to kill them all, sometimes you uh, have a one on one battle with a boss that you've got to take on. Uh, and so you've, you're struggling to keep your bike on the road and not go veering off of bridges and up, up mountains or crash into vehicles. Why are people just driving around willy nilly? Like people are taking taxi cabs in this game for some reason. None of it makes sense, uh, but you've got all of these, you know, obstacles in your way that you've got to avoid, and if you can't avoid them, and if you do get the controls down, it just feels incredibly fun to bash people off of their motorbikes, and they go flailing and flying, 
Uh, you do have to kill a bunch of cops in this game. It's all just this crazy, you know, ridiculous high fantasy. It's kind of uh, Mad Maxian with some of the enemies that you've got to battle with. And it's also, you know, obviously paying homage to 90s based extreme games like this. Uh, but, uh, you know, the core of it is just enjoyable, and it puts a smile on your face when you bash your opponents off of their bikes, and sometimes you get allies, and you're not supposed to bash them off your bikes, and you will be told, don't bash your allies off of their bikes, uh, and there's cars to blow up. You get um, bombs that you can attach to different vehicles. I loved doing that as well. That was really fun. You'd sidle up beside somebody, and you go, and then the countdown timer would go, beep, boop, boop, and then they would explode in a big fireball, which was always cool. Uh, sometimes you get these hallucinogenic um, uh, missions as well where cars are just falling from the sky and you're trying to avoid them like you're you know driving through a scene from Twister or something like that that was super cool as well uh, you know lots of things will frustrate you and annoy you when you play this game uh, as they did me the challenge is a little bit all over the place some uh, missions that you're gonna you know you're gonna blast through like racing is not that difficult if you just want to avoid everybody um, but sometimes you will get hung up and you know cars will just appear over the horizon in a cheap way or you'll be going too fast and you can't get out of the way or you veer off road for a big chunk of time so you got to reset to the track and the way that the game penalizes you is pretty tough as well you've got basically a uh, a persistent health meter that goes down also goes up with the amount of carnage that you create uh, but it goes down from level to level so sometimes uh, you know you'll be just have like a little tiny titch of health and you've got to start a whole sort of you know road mission and uh, you don't make it very far because if you get beamed on the head by a sledgehammer or shot or you know run into a car poof you're done game over and start again so it's very arcadey um, and the cool way that they've kind of justified that is they randomize uh, the track layouts, which are really point A to point B. Um, you're you're going to see a lot of repeating scenery and stuff like that, but it's not the exact same sequence of scenery or vehicles or, or ob obstacles or bridges that you can take, side shortcuts that you can take, shortcuts. Uh, and when you do take those, sometimes you'll get health power-ups or nitro power-ups. That's the other thing that you're always kind of grappling with is when to press that boost button by double-tapping on the uh, R trigger. Uh, and that will, you know, you'll be burning rubber down the road and you'll wail past some of the opponents that you got to tar and knock off. Uh, so it's not as elegant as it potentially could be for sure. Visually, uh, control wise, um, you know, texture details. Uh, even the animations and things like that that you'll see from the bad guys that you're the opponents they're not, not, not nobody's really a bad guy everybody's a bad guy in this thing uh, but you know what the the little commentary that you get from your buddy uh, who's who's up there you know egging you on is kind of funny when you get screamed at by your opponents it's kind of funny as well uh, it's definitely done with a tongue and, and cheek sense of humor uh, there's some thrashy kind of metal type music in there there's some techno music None of it is overly um, memorable or overly offensive. It kind of works with this extreme style of gameplay. Uh, and I, I dug it. I mean, one thing that I definitely will say is that you're not going to find a lot of people to play with online right now. I, I don't think tons and tons of people are finding this game. Uh, I think it, if it becomes a hit or a big success for the developers, it will be more of the cult hit variety. Uh, but, you you know, you are going to have fun blasting through these different uh, desert areas and snowy areas, and you are going to fun have fun toppling uh, your opponents and blowing up cop cars. And I think the thing that was the most fun for me was reloading my shotgun and blasting away at uh, some of the people on the road as giant semi-trucks were driving by. It just felt like Terminator 2. I had a smile on my face with this game when I wasn't yelling at it because I had to start over again because it is difficult. Um, you can also unlock all kinds of attributes as well. They put in this light RPG sort of mechanic in there where you take your XP points and you spend them on uh, increased health or increased ammunition. Uh, and you can also unlock uh, later levels that you have uh, gone past. So you can start the game not from level one or race one. You can start from level three. Uh, all of this is sort of the campaign mode. You can also just jump into a quick race mode and just have fun with it, and it will randomize everything, and um, you will just sort of race around and, and beat up on, on everybody that's on the road. Listen, 
This isn't a perfect game by any stretch of the imagination. It, uh, you know, it could run better. It could look better. It could play better even. Uh, but I thought it was really, really fun. I really enjoyed this title. And because of that, I'm putting all of my weight of my score into the fun camp. I'm going to give uh, Road Redemption an 8 out of 10. But right now, it's time to take a look back in time with a brand new buried treasure. My buried treasure today is going back to 1998 for the original Game Boy. It is James Bond. And the reason why I played this James Bond Game Boy game is because I have the Super Game Boy and I stuck it into my analog Super NT and I wanted to see how it would work with these old Game Boy cartridges. I haven't played this game in ages, but I wanted to talk a little bit about it because it was a very weird game. It's kind of like a top-down action RPG with James Bond. And you go on a globetrotting mission, you go to Marrakesh, you go to Tibet, you go to China, and you deal with lots of characters that you might have seen before, including Odd Job, and you got to shoot at bad guys, and you got some karate moves, and you've got all kinds of gadgets and things that you can pick up, but everything is so rudimentary and blocky and in black and white. But you know what? It's kind of compelling, especially if you're a James Bond fan. It's a little bit silly, it's certainly dated looking, but it's kind of cool to dive back into a video game history like this. There haven't been tons and tons of James Bond games out there to play, and there's been a few good ones and a lot of mediocre ones. I think this one veers a little bit more to the mediocre side, but there is an uh, you know an unquestionable charm about it, especially playing it through the analog Super NT, through HDMI on a 4K television. It was just all surreal, and to hear that sort of MIDI chiptune James Bond music go over and over again, I, I had a big smile on my face. You could be James Bond the super spy as a tiny little sprite. It's crazy. That's why James Bond 007 on the Game Boy is a buried treasure. You were not expecting James Bond 007, were you, my friends? Uh, yes, I had the uh, Super Game Boy, and I wanted to throw uh, some old cart cartridges in, and I found that one, and I was like, wow, geez, I'm kind of getting addicted to this thing. Uh, listen, I we I, I put together a piece with Nintendo about uh, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, and it's been playing in theater screens across the country, and people keep... Uh, sending me pictures or, or talking to me or seeing me on the street. Um, and I actually had a, my, my old college or my old high school date to senior prom had just seen, seen me in that uh, big screen kind of thing. And she, she put it on my Facebook page, which is weird. It's always surreal. Like the, the, this whole thing of us doing videos that end up on Cineplex screens, we, we just started doing that last year. And it's interesting to see and hear from people that don't normally watch EP Live. Well, you should, though, right? Everybody that is with us today agrees you should be here with EP Live. But they don't normally watch what we're doing all the time. So out of nowhere, they see me on the screen. Uh, but anyways, Jonathan McFall um, actually took a picture of us uh, in our, our piece with uh, Andrew from Nintendo Canada uh, uh, doing the interview. And he sent it to me. Uh, right now because he was watching a movie or something and he caught the segment which is great and I, I had a weird thing actually that happened yesterday and we're about to play the review of the movie that i saw but i went to the theater and i'm wearing my epn sweatshirt and I, as i was walking into the screen i'm like i'm hearing my voice coming off of the big screen and i'm wearing the same sweatshirt it looks like i'm trying to like look at me i'm live i'm popping right off the screen but it was totally unintentional i just like that sweatshirt i wear it all the time what can i say i really dig it it's very comfy Anyways, thank you, Jonathan McFowl. The movie that I saw yesterday, and we've got a review of it right now, is Creed II. It's time, kid. There is this new phenomenon in movies that we're starting to see actors that played characters that we loved 20 or 30 years ago come back and reprise their roles, and we see them age before our eyes. And we see them as a different version of the same person, but much later. And, you know, when I saw Creed II, much the same kinds of emotions sort of welled up inside of me as when I saw the original Creed. To see an aging Sylvester Stallone reprise his role as Rocky Balboa. What a beautiful portrait of this character, this really, really incredible actor has provided for us. We've been able to watch Rocky Balboa grow old. I'm not going to be here forever. It's a really powerful effect. It's probably the most powerful visual effect I've seen in movies in a long time. 
And it's a kind of a new thing for us as moviegoers, you know, because the entire industry of movie making is only about 100 years old. And for the most part, the business has been building new things and building new things. And yes, there's been sequels. And, you know, sometimes the actors age out of the role. Like we've seen so many people take the role of James Bond. But to see actors like Sylvester Stallone or also Harrison Ford and Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher reprise roles that we love them for is kind of a gift. You got to do some smart thinking. And in this movie, in Creed 2, we also get to see Dolph Lundgren reprise his role as Ivan Drago. And of course, the big conceit of this is that it's Drago's son, Victor Drago, going up against Apollo Creed's son, Adonis Creed. And in Rocky 4, we can all remember that Drago killed Apollo Creed in the boxing ring. And so there's this crazy sort of central drama there, which I have to be honest, is the cheesiest part of this movie. The Drago stuff got to me a little bit because of course every sequence that we get with Ivan Drago and his son is sort of in blue tones and it's somber and the, you know, the Russian music jumps in. It's it's so Boris and Natasha. It's so, you, you know, comic bookian and, and uh, over the top, you know, the Russians are, are just nasty and they're in it for the wrong, it was just a little bit too forced. And even the boxing, and I, you know, trust me, I've seen every one of these Rocky movies and most of them in the theater. And most of the time I'm one of those people that's just in the seat punching and dodging and weaving, get up, get up, you know, I'm usually there. This one, not so much, and it wasn't because the choreography was off. Clearly, the actors got ripped, and they have awesome training sequences. All of that stuff is in there. But the thing is, this is the seventh Rocky Balboa picture or, or boxing picture associated with Rocky Balboa. Maybe it's more, maybe it's eight. I've lost count, and that's a problem because we've seen these boxing scenes over and over again. But I have to tell you, this movie is still wonderful. I absolutely adored the first Creed, and it was because it was a different slant, it was a different story, it was a familiar starting from nothing, going to something kind of boxing drama, and we've seen a lot of those. But Michael B. Jordan and Tessa Thompson are just two of the greatest actors on screen right now. I would watch them do anything. I wouldn't be any good to anybody if I don't handle this the right way. And then you throw in the heart and that tenderness that Sylvester Stallone throws into every scene that he's got as Rocky. And you have to watch this film. You have to watch this performance. He's magnificent. There's a truth and a, and a just, a, just a, a loveliness to every sequence he has. He stumbles over his words. Still, he recounts moments that we saw unfold 30, 40 years ago with that sort of absent-mindedness, you know, that sort of searching for words, and, and he stumbles on them, and it's powerful. It feels real. What's amazing is you can see the pain, and you can see the learnings, and every time that, uh, see, I'm getting choked up just talking about it, but you can you can see the pain, and you can see the, the learnings. Every time Rocky is at a, uh, a cemetery, and he's having a conversation with Adrian, and it's reflected on the age of Sylvester Stallone's face and the wrinkles and, and you know, he's trying to kind of keep a stiff upper lip and stuff, but he's, he's struggling through that. You can see it. It's just wonderful stuff. These actors are so damn good. And that's everybody, Felicia Rashad and Wood Harris, who, uh, you know, who was incredible in The Wire. Everybody is so powerful and so good. What do you have to prove? This is an amazing couple of films. I don't think that this is as surprising and as out of the blue and wonderful as the first Creed movie is. And if you haven't seen that, stop everything and get a Blu-ray or download this sucker and watch it because it's beautiful. Creed 2 is not quite that level of surprise and wonder, but it's close and it's really well made. And I want you to watch it. And I want you to tell me what you think of it because it really got me right here. I loved it. I'm going to give Creed 2 a 9 out of 10. Yeah, an incredible movie. Uh, it's weird to watch myself get choked up in there, but I was flashing back to scenes that I saw in the film, and uh, it, it hit me hard. It really did. I, I, and I was talking to Blake a little bit before we started rolling today that uh, um, maybe it's because I've been watching these Rocky movies all the way along, you know, and it, it just really hits you that you're, like Sylvester Stallone has been in my life for a, my whole life, it feels like. Uh, anyways, it's an incredible film. 
We are moving on, though, and we have a bit of a tight schedule because Blake and I have to rush off to uh, to do something after we're done today. Um, so we're going to jump right back in and play a little bit more Battlefield Five. Um, I beat the first mission. took me a little while. Thanks for pointing out all my... Um, uh, ineffectiveness as a first-person shooter player. Uh, but I did okay with the first mission, which was uh, set in North Africa. Now we're in Norway, in the bitter cold of Norway. And um, I'm not going to spoil too much, but I'm this uh, assassin type um, who is trying to get a satchel to a dead drop now. All kinds of really cool things have happened before. I'm really enjoying this game. They've done a really good job. These are all the war stories, the little sort of single-player bits here. So we're going to play guys. a little bit more. Um, uh, oh, Thorazine666, this is a great review. Loves the fact that the emotions got me like that. Yeah, I was... I was really moved by the movie. Anyways, let's jump into uh, Battlefield Five. Blake's here now. He can, uh, uh, you, if you've got comments or questions or whatever, you let know us know. What it is I love about being Spider-Man. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Who wouldn't like to be Spider-Man, right? Uh, did you review Fallout Seventy Six? No, it's next on the queue. I'm scared, guys. I got to be honest. I've been reading all the horror stories. Do it stealth. Be stealth. Oh, you screwed up. The oh, trick shit. is to, when you shoot the gun, the trick is to make sure you hit the enemies. I know, I know, but there's, there, it's chuggy too. That's the other <laughs> thing. It's, it's not as fluid as it is on so my Bronstad. I have not reviewed Fallout 76. I know I've got to put 30 hours into that, and I know it's buggy as hell. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> oh, Tiago Santos is asking how I got to work for EP. Uh, I was hired for a show you were making in 2007 called The Art of Play. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a HD... The first uh, HD video game show. Yeah, and we need... It was a, it basically the whole show was just gameplay footage. Mm -hmm. So you had like two full-time gameplay guys working on that show, and I was one of them. We told the story of the games through narration and, yeah. uh, and then a lot of gameplay footage, and we had recorded it all in HD cam. Yeah. Well, when I started, it was when you just switched over to XD Cam, but it was still HD. Yeah. And yeah, so I was just playing games, and then I just sort of worked my way up, my way up from there. I was like, oh, I'll help out shooting, I'll help out writing. So, yeah. oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. God damn, why do I have to load right in the middle of that? Ugh. Or not load, but reload. Uh, question, Vic, mm -hmm. from Jordan Cunningham. Are you getting the Marvel Legends Game vs. Spider-Man 6-inch figure from EB Games? Uh, is it from the Sp the Spider-Man video game? Uh, I may. I think it's from Marvel Legends. Is Marvel Legends a game? What is that? No, Marvel Legends is a toy line. I um, might. I, it, you know, I, I don't buy tons. Oh, Game Verse. So that, yeah, that I don't buy tons and tons of... Uh, Toys like I used to because I have tons and tons my of toys. They have to be kind my of. My spider senses are tingling when you said that you don't buy a lot of toys. Well, I buy a lot of toys for you know, an adult, I guess. But <laughs> I, I I buy less toys. I love them all. Do I need I to just, pan the camera? Where I just we can see I, this, this whole wall I, right I, here. I've run of out toys. of room. No, you don't need to. Uh, so I'm a little bit choosier now. So I, although I would love walls of Spider-Man figures, I have many, um, and. <laughs> So I can't, I can't just keep buying them. Uh, so it had to be kind of different. And I bought these because I love the, uh, the, the sort of implied connection to Disney Infinity, which I thought had great design. Yeah, they definitely put Disney Infinity design to use with designing these. Cause right? It they look so It looks great. just like Disney yeah. Infinity. And I've always wanted a Yoda that looked like the, uh, the Clone Wars Yoda, and that's pretty damn close, like the animated version of Yoda. Yep. I love that Yoda. Come on! Why didn't you just shoot him? Why did you throw your knife? Because a knife is one hit, one kill. But the aiming is so right hard. There. I have to look at this screen. This is just choppy Yeah, look, why are you looking there? Yeah, that's like, and there's I, lag in that one, too. I can't, I can't play it on that screen right now. You should now. never not look at the, that. You should always look at that screen. I'm dead. God damn. Oh, I died because of cold. So I'm fighting the cold right here as well as the bad guys. The Nazis. Uh, it's question. fun killing the Nazis. After watching the recent uh, Angry Video Game Nerd, did you ever have an Amiga CD32? No, I did not. What is the Amiga CD32? I've never uh, heard of this. That was a, uh, a Commodore system just 
before or around the time that that Sega brought out the Genesis. Oh, uh, okay. Um, so it was kind of it was very game friendly. A lot of learnings from the Commodore sixty four and and uh, Vic twenty. Even looks like the um, Sega Genesis. But it, yeah, it was very much a gaming computer. Yeah. Uh, and they had solid games. Cygnosis used to make a ton of games for that machine. That's where they kind of built their reputation. And then they started working with Sony. Um, but no, I never had one of the... I, I didn't... Re, like, I took a little bit of a break when I was in acting school and, and, um, and in university. I was... I, w I didn't have time and I didn't have money to be a huge gamer. But when I got out of acting school and started to get work, I spent a lot of money on, uh, on new games. There we go. Oh, I keep looking at the TV. Um, so I'm trying to get to these fire pits here. So, it's all fucking course. There. Okay. I'm trying to get to the fire so I can warm up and not die right away. Is that what you have to do? You have to go. From yeah, fire from fire to, to fire. fire. Exactly. That's, kinda, that's a cool mechanic. In, in the storm. Yeah. It's cool, man. This... They, they stole that idea from that Will Smith movie. Do you remember that? No. That movie he did with his kid. When he's on an alien planet and he has oh, to go from yeah, yeah, like, yeah. fire to because it's a cold Gary planet. W Gary Witter wrote that after yeah, Earth. Yeah, and they have to go to the kid has to go from like heat. That's an M Night Shyamalan to, movie, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that movie sucked. Yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> but they all tried. It's kind of a cool production design in it. I remember. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I just lost the satchel. Not good. I'm kind of showing the end of this single-player mission here or getting close to the end so if the apologies for spoilers but i guess that's what let's plays are all about spoilers right? the nazis lose yeah take it take some doing though yeah uh people uh tyler fisher how excited are you for tommy's in television super excited yeah we've been, yeah pumped i can't news, wait to have him on the show again the news that they just announced was that they're uh making they announced a new game for it uh based on one of the old Intellivision, uh, it's called like Word, not Word Foo, it's like a Scrabble game for the original Intellivision. And Tommy says he's gonna do the score. Oh, right on. Yeah. I, I know, saw I know it on Twitter. they're having a big summit right now. Who is this character? Is this a woman you're playing as mm -hmm. or like a little boy? <laughs> she's, she's a woman, a very young woman. There's a cool movie that came out, I think it's called Winter in Wartime. It's a Norwegian film and you mm. play, it's about a kid who starts working for as a spy for the Norwegian resistance against the Nazis and occupied. I'm sure that was an influence here. Yeah, like that was a really cool movie. I mean, this was made in Sweden, so there was probably a lot of stories oh, that, yeah, we, of course, that we yeah. never hear I about. Totally, I totally forgot it was made, and uh, yeah. it makes perfect sense for them to watch. But she's, she's frozen. <clears throat> okay, that was a bit of a spoiler right there. What are people talking about? Idris Elba? Y'all are on a tangent now. I can't... Uh, people people in the chat always go on tangents, and I'm mm. like trying to find what they're talking about. Let us know how the audio is, guys. Seems okay. I, I really dig this uh, the cinematic kind of angle that they've done with the uh, the story bits in uh, in Battlefield Five. Makes it feel distinct from the multiplayer. Mm -hmm, yeah. Did you just die? No. Nope. Oh, you're you're having a dream. Yeah, you're. Cl I'm so close to dead. Are, is she speaking English or is she? No. That's she, cool. Yeah, she's speaking. Uh, uh, Norwegian. Did they do that in the other chapters as well? Uh, yep, it's very much uh, appropriate casting, and that's always annoying in World War II movies when it's like the Nazis just speak English, and the Nazis and the Nazis are speaking German. That's good. Yeah, that makes sense. It's gonna be. What are you guys talking about in the chat? It's gonna be a heavy R rating. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Spawn movie. Oh, okay. That's my guess. They're, um, McFarlane's gone on record saying he Fox wants it to be the most violent superhero movie ever. And Fox is distributing it? Uh, I'm not sure. Because that's Disney now. Let me check. Let me, let me Google that. Oh, crap. It's wet swinging time! <laughs> Whoa! 
She is badass. What is she doing? She's killing this Nazi with her bare hands. And then it's gonna steal his weapon. Okay. But first, warm up. Oh, the fox they're referring to is Jamie Foxx. Okay. Mm. okay. That makes sense. Jamie is, Foxx is Michael J. Be... White in the uh, in the new season of Arrow. I know he spends quite a bit of time up here in Vancouver. Uh, I met him on the Mortal Kombat set. He was terrific. Super cool guy. And same with Jerry Ryan. Love her. She's awesome. You know what Jerry Ryan was in, Vic? Mm. Star Trek. Yes, I know. She's a cool, a cool person. I should reach out and see if she'd be on the show one day. I could cool, get her right? to sign my uh, Deep yeah, Space Nine yeah. DVDs, or my uh, Voyager DVDs that I don't own because I don't like Voyager. <laughs> uh, question from Adrian Lee and Vic: Will you still be planning to? Are you still planning to play Red Dead Online with Xbox One players or with the PS4 players? Uh, I think Xbox One. That's where I've I've done the most digging. They should have cross-platform. Yeah. They have it now on the PS4. Like, why is Rockstar not doing that? Blade is still one of the best Marvel slash vampire movies. It's still a fantastic movie. And if Marvel is working on more, I really hope they do the right thing and bring Wesley Snipes back. And old Wesley Snipes kicking ass as Blade would be they can, incredible. Legally, they can't, because then it's... Because that's the problem they had with Andrew Garfield bringing him back as Spider-Man mm. in the MCU. You can't, because then it's a sequel. And then ah, they, they, okay. Then you, there's, there's a whole bunch of people who, oh, have, right, yeah. who own a stake in those original films. You're and right. producers and production oh. companies that are partners on it. If it's a sequel, they have to be involved somehow. Mm -hmm. That's why they couldn't make a, just Andrew Garfield in uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, because it's... Okay, so I made it somewhere. Now I'm going to go and uh, <coughs> recon occupation strong points. Let's see how we do here. What time we got here? Okay, we got, we got a good 10 minutes here. Um, <clears throat> Did we wish a happy Thanksgiving to our American Oh, no, we uh, did viewers? not. Happy Thanksgiving, every American that's watching. Hope you're having a fantastic holiday. A couple and of people are talking about the Macy's uh, parade. And, and you're spending it with family oh, and ski friends. Ski off that roof, Vic. I can't, you, I can't get over there. What? What'd Still pretty do? cool. What are you doing here, Vic? <laughs> Woo! See you, should, you're, see, you're supposed to ski down that thing, Vic. Maybe if I replay it. Yeah, 100% they put that there for you to ski down. Yeah. Here, kill yourself so you I can start just, again. I just jumped over it. Okay. I'll Crash just... into that wall. <laughs> I didn't do it. Brilliant. Nothing happened. That was terrible. There wasn't even a sound effect. Okay, here we go. There I'm, you go. I'm, I'm... Ah! Whoosh. That's cool. Destroy heavy water shipping trucks. Am I still in my skis? <laughs> You're cross country skiing. <laughs> uh, Jordan Cunningham's going to shop. Okay. Because I guess it's Black, Fr Black Friday's tomorrow, right? Yes, it is. So yeah, you want to get a head start on that Black Friday. Uh, I have to blow up these these trucks over here. Okay. Oh, I should be looking. So, at are it. you a spy Did or? You see that guy just pop on? No, he came out of the, the smoke there, yeah. So are you a spy working for... Yes. Okay. You're not yeah. a, just a resistance fighter. You're actually working for the government of whatever country you're from? Um, I'm dead. Y yes, I've been, a, I've been uh, recruited by a very important person. Okay. Who's the very important person? I can't tell. Oh, just tell That's me. A, it's no her, one cares. It's her mom. Oh, okay who is a more senior operative and she gets captured and then okay. the, the first part is you try to rescue your Do they your have mom. any famous like real life people in the story? Uh, Mark Strong is in this game. No, I'm talking about real oh, life real, oh, figures I'm, from World War II. I, I, I don't know. I have not seen that yet. <laughs> yeah, the famous uh, World War II general, Mark Strong. Because <laughs> I remember in Battlefield 1 they had Lawrence of Arabia. Right. And uh, a few other people. Yeah, there. they do some good work, man. Dice rocks. Have you ever been, you've been to London a bunch of times. Did yep. you ever go to Churchill's Bunker? Uh, I don't think so. It's pretty cool. I, I went to it. It's uh, it's definitely a bunker. 
It's right next to the Parliament buildings. Okay. It's kind of freaky when you think like they spent the whole war pretty much inside an underground bunker. Like, that's intense. Okay, I got some firepower now. There's not going to be any accuracy on that thing, Vic. Why do I only have six bullets on this thing? That's no good. I like the kind of wide openness of the game, too. Like, it, it's really not funneling me anywhere. I can go where I want to go, which is cool. Tyler Fisher, question. If Ed Boon offered, would you voice a character or narration in the new Mortal Kombat game? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Please tweet at Ed Boon and say, offer Vic a chance to do a character or back narration. Up. People. That would be great. Choke them together with a gun. I love Ed Boon. He is amazing. He's one of the first people I met in the game industry. And at E395, I interviewed him and uh, John Tobias about Mortal Kombat 2 coming to the Super Nintendo. Oh, he's right next to barrels, Vic. Shoot those barrels. Yeah, they don't explode. Shoot those right red away. barrels. What? They don't explode right away. What kind of game is this? Every barrel is supposed to explode. Well, they, they take a couple of seconds. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I met Ed Boon. Oh, did I blow this up? I did. It's done. When did uh, when did this become a thing in shooters when you kill someone the the targeting reticle reticle changes to red for a second when you kill the guy? Mm -hmm. Do you remember like when did that first start happening? Like I remember GTA Five did it. That was 2013. Oh man, I wish I had a rocket launcher. I don't know, man. It, there's it's been like, so many shooters, and they all thing. borrow liberally from each other. Yeah, because it's because it, there's obviously trends in every game, yeah. right, or every genre. Yeah, it's hard to pinpoint exactly when specific things started to take off. You I want to say it's like a pretty new trend, but when did battle royale start? <laughs> well, that's pretty obvious. I mean, the Bonk. obvious one is is uh, battle rounds. Right? I can't say battle royale without hearing the, the uh, frying pan. Yeah, the frying pan. I always <laughs> I just hear it right away. Bonk. I love that frying pan. <laughs> It's so much fun. Uh, Tiago Santos, question, Vic, are classic yep. episodes coming back, or are you done uploading those? Uh, no, we are not done. I, I still haven't figured out what we're doing with... Uh, I, I want to get some um, uh, money to be able to do it properly, <laughs> <Yeah>. to, <laughs> to be totally We'd have to... Direct. It would take resources. We're, we're up to the point where we've ended the ones that we had digitized, basically. Yeah. And so to do more would take resources. We have the tapes sitting around, but yeah, yeah. It's, we just, it's just going to take work. And honestly, everything we've posted has not been done in, in an ele as elegant a way as we want. I mean, the episodes are great, but the there's still lots of stuff that we could be doing that I want to do. So I, I I have to find the time to put the. Uh, the pitches together, whether it's to for uh, sponsors and and partners or crowdfunding, but to put more episodes up, I want to do it right, and it's going to take some money. Classic EP on Blu-ray. <laughs> Everybody says that, but even that just scares that, the crap out of me. That's kind of superfluous, like, though, because they're not like, HD. It, well, it sounds like a ton of work as well. The the master tapes are SD, so there's no point putting them on Blu-ray. Oh yeah, but you can up res. Yeah, but it's, you know, it's just as good as you can watch it online. Or, yeah. Probably better. Oh, what did Ooh, that, that guy was die? cool. He oh, he got hit shrapnel. by shit. Oh, that's cool. That's pretty cool. Okay. I'm supposed to, now where am I supposed to go? Oh, you got to blow up that one truck right there, Vic. Do I? Yeah, there's a red thing on it. See? Now I need to go to the strong points. Okay, 560 this way. People Don't you saying, wish that there were little icons that told you which direction to go just above your head all the, all the time like that? In real life? Yeah. Or? Yeah. I guess we have our phones. Well, that's coming, Vic. All you need, you know, just a pair of AR, of AR glasses. Yeah. 
Apple's working on one now. Do so. this. Yeah. <laughs> Go over here. That would come really in handy when you're driving. Yeah. Like to have yeah, it but be a, an AR thing like on the windshield, like turn here, pedestrian yeah. coming, you know. But, uh, you know, like like a digital assistant that you don't even ask for directions, it just tells you yep. your directions. It's like, it's coming. You got to go do this. You got to take five, care of this banking. I'm going to predict that five years from now, that will be the yeah. thing. It just tells you, it orders you around. And it'll be like yeah, when okay. smartphone. remember when smartphones came out and then it was like a year later, no one could remember what it was like to not have a smartphone? Yes. Right? It'll be like that in five years with AR glasses. Crazy. And then, then the next step after that, in like 20 years, it'll be like a contact lens you can get surgically implanted into your eyeball. Right. That. And then we're robots. And I'm fine with that. I'm, I'm cool with that. The thing I hate about being a robot is... <laughs> Anything that gives me like another way to play Half-Life 2, I'm good with. <laughs> Let's go. Nintendo Boy, a game. What's a game that you admit is bad, but you had fun playing? I reviewed one today. <laughs> Road Redemption is kind of yeah, the game kind of fun. bad, but it's so fun. fun it was. It's really hard to put down. That happens all the time. You know, you just you don't know why you obsess over something. Um, it's. I, I have been. I, I haven't had too many guilty pleasure experiences recently. I, nothing that, that comes to mind right away. I mean, G-Force was one that I uh, talked about in that where you played the guinea pigs. Oh, yeah. yeah. I talked about that the, in The Barry Jerry Tricky. Bruckheimer animated uh, yeah. gerbil movie. Yeah. That was, the, the game was good. Oh, that's he shot his that, hat off. That, that comes to mind right away. Did you see him clip through that? Uh, yeah. That was cool. So what destroys state police intelligence? So what is that, the Gestapo? I guess so. Uh oh, 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 I guess they, they're not just, did they not just say Gestapo? Oh my is that God. another, Don't uh... there, you're gonna die. Ah! Okay. Oh, I keep looking at the TV. I gotta look down here. Look, look there, Vic. Okay. Don't look at the TV. Should I turn the TV off? No. Okay. <laughs> oh, come on. Please, if you could just reload slower. That would be great. Well, that's the thing with big guns, Vic. Just reload, reload as slow as you possibly can. There's no problem. Oh my god. Did I just throw that out there? No, they did. Okay. Oh, I have some grenades now. I guess I'm not a stealthy spy with knives anymore. <laughs> <laughs> There's no stealthiness going on right here. There's a guy right there. But... Oh! You know what? Catch. Look before you jump over the fence. <laughs> Got him. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, man. It's like, it's, it's like choppy. that old, it's, it's like choppy. that old uh, proverb: never jump over a fence if there's a whole bunch of Nazis waiting for you on the other side. Tyler, yes, I did resolve the issue uh, with uh, Danny O'Dwyer, and it wasn't really an issue. Uh, what, the reason what? why I posted it, I, he wanted to. They, they put a, a clip from our Half Life stuff into his uh, documentary, and uh, I wasn't asked about it, and and that bugs the crap out of me. And uh, if you guys see anybody reposting our stuff, um. I haven't given permission for people to do that, so if you want to send me a Did he at least links, like credit on the screen, like Electric Playground? No, it was just as part of his trailer, and I, I you know, I know where he's coming from. He's he's an amazing creator. He's doing great work over there, uh, but I don't. I we have never met in person, and I didn't. I don't have. You know, we, I follow him on Twitter, but he doesn't know who I am, and we haven't followed each other, um, so I couldn't DM him. And I thought about it. I was like, am I going to send the public tweet at him? And I, I thought, you know. It's it's raising it's raising a lot of noise, but I kind of want people to know that it, it's not cool to just grab footage and stick things in it, especially our footage, which is very exclusive. We're the only group doing it. At very least, they should put on the screen electric playground episode. Blah, blah, blah. Well, I just want to be asked. I want to be asked every time, you know, because you know, people are not going to find those interviews anywhere else, and if they're going to use them, they got to ask me, and I'm not going to say yes to everybody because you know I want it to be something that we can generate some revenue from so we can build more stuff and do our own documentaries of that content. Um, so anyways, I did decide I'm gonna stick it up as a, a public thing and then got some some uh, uh, responses on that. Some people were like, why did you do that? And why, why would you say that publicly? It's like, you know what? It's okay to have this conversation, you know? Just because you can borrow and rip things off of YouTube all the time doesn't mean that you should, right. you know? And uh, I think creators should be brought into the loop when 
you know, footage is just grabbed from other sources like that. Um, so anyways, Danny was totally cool and we are following each other and we've DM'd and, and uh, you will see some EP content uh, in that Half-Life uh, documentary that he's putting together. What was it, the Gabe uh, interview where he's on the train? No, that's Half-Life 2, where I, I interviewed him for Half-Life 1 in 1998. Oh, wow. And uh, I can tell you there were no other video cameras shooting those, you know, especially television quality TV cameras uh, at that party where I talked to uh, Gabe about, uh, about the game. And uh, so if you're doing documentaries about that kind of material, yeah, you're going to want to use our stuff. I, I wish people didn't just assume that it was so easy for us to just grab that stuff and just give it away, you know? Because it isn't. I'm still looking at the TV. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm doing some slaying, though. But you will see some stuff with Danny, and I'm a big fan of his. I think he's great. And his heart is in the right place. All right, so I gotta destroy this. What do I gotta do? Yeah. Burn it. Uh oh. Oh, I'm looking at the Just shot another medic there. You gotta get things done. Oh, he stubbed oh. that guy right in the dick. Come on! Oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> Let's. <laughs> that was the weakest death ever. You should be able to do some, like, your the reloading animation should not slow you down well, there. You should you, be able to have that's some contextual That's the point of the gun thing. you have. No, you have I a know. Big gun. Look at the size of your clip. I know, it's it's takes huge. up half the screen. Ooh, just choppy as heck. Okay. It isn't this choppy, guys. That's just the streaming. Uh, it's, this, it's going through a bunch of machines to be this choppy. Okay, so where do I go now? 700 meters away. We'll run through the uh, sewers and avoid any kind of conflict. All right, here we go. Any other questions or comments? Uh, Rock and Ray Guns coming back this year. Yep. They absolutely are. We're doing something um, ki kind of similar to what we did last year. Uh, we're going to have EPN members um, join us for uh, videos. And I sent out a comment uh, to the, or I sent out a, a note to the EPN members yesterday. Um, so people are going to be providing us videos and uh, their thoughts on some of their choices for the rocket and ray guns. And we'll probably uh, be asking some of the, the people that we know in the community. Maybe Danny O'Dwyer. Maybe he'd like to send us a little video. Um, uh, we got to go to work. We got to go. Uh, but yeah, Rocket and Ray Guns are going to be a uh, week of December 10th. And uh, stay tuned for more info. And if you want to provide, um, you know, video uh, material to be included in that, uh, sign up, join up, and become an EPN member, and then send us your vids. And you'll be getting uh, some other benefits as well. Uh, but we do have to go. We have to, we have to wrap this up. It's time. We get, we're going to be late for our thing. Okay, bye, everyone. Uh, is there a better way to easily notice those direct-to-member messages? We don't have... Uh, Tyler, that's a good question. We don't have a mailing list with everybody. I, like, uh, we, we, you know, we don't have tons of resources, so I don't have like a social media manager. I don't have people that are handling the way that we connect with everybody. Um, so right now, that's the easiest for us, is to just write something right there. So please do check out the community chunk of the uh, ET, EP uh, channel on YouTube, and there are messages there that are for the members, uh, exclusive to, to members and their, their sort of general messages and stuff like that. Um, and down the road, definitely I want to get a, a, a mailing list together again, but then to collect all of that data and all that information, and it uh, becomes more time consuming. You know, right now we're focusing on delivering as much content as we can. That is primarily what we are focused on. That's why we have so many videos going up all the time. Uh, thank you very much, Farmer. Fix the C. <laughs> all right you guys we have to uh, call it a day on ep live thank you so much for watching uh tomorrow we are back to a rundown we can't do ep live tomorrow but we'll have the news for you so please come back for that in the meantime check out the other content that we've been watching go see creed 2 this weekend it's awesome and if you've got a switch i think you should check out that road redemption game thanks for watching everybody uh we will see you tomorrow and in, in until then play forever okay